Crown Bee and we are in my kitchen at Winter's house. And it's one of my favorite places to tuck in for the winter. In January, I don't know if you guys have a practice of, um, you know, kind of refreshing everything. And I have several projects that I want to share with you. The first one that I do is I make an organic natural uh, house cleaner for my home, an all-purpose cleaner. There's a lot of great products out on the market, uh, but they can be quite expensive. And my little grandkids, I have four, they're touching everything. And I just worry what is in that house cleaner that I'm using. So I began years ago making my own. Coming out of Christmas, you probably have all of this stuff. If you're like me, um, a ton of oranges, most likely and pine needles. Now, if you don't have a natural Christmas tree or natural garland, we have an artificial tree because I'm so scared of fires, holy moly. But I have a lot of extra pine needles from all of the garland that I decorate with here. And what I did is I filled up this quart jar. Now, normally I would do half. So what I can do is I can get another quart jar, take half of those out and then refill it. And then I'll have twice as much, but I was kind of in a hurry. Um, you can also use oranges. You want to use the orange peel because that has all the oils and the great cleaning components in it. The inside is not wasted either because I'll make a big pitcher of natural orange juice. And so it's just so incredible when you can make it fresh like that. And I use my Nutribullet. I just stick all of them in there. I have a big copper pot full of oranges that we made those pomanders that I showed you. And so I have like probably a bag of them left over. And so this will be a great project before they go bad to use them up. Now, what you'll need, you'll need your orange peel or, in, or your pine needles. Now fresh dried, it doesn't matter. I've used them both. So don't worry if your Christmas tree is just, you know, paper dry, it won't matter or your garland. And then you'll need a carrier. And in this case, it's vinegar which as you know, vinegar is a great cleaning agent too. And I use it like crazy. Greenwood hates the smell, but I will usually use it early in the morning. And by the time he's home from work, it's all gone, but it's such a powerful cleaning agent. And simple as this, I removed the, the peeling from the orange and I toss them in a jar. So incredibly simple. This is just a generic white vinegar. You can use anything you have. I don't, I've never used apple cider vinegar. I was afraid that the, you know, it's got a little color to it. I didn't know if it would stain, but you can always try if that's what you have. And then I simply will fill the jar up with that. I'm just gonna cover them because I'll have to get another jar of this out of the pantry. And then you're gonna put this, oh, that's powerful. You're gonna put this in a, you know, dark dry place and you're gonna let it do its thing. Um, this I did probably a week ago um, and I opened up the jar and the pine smell from that is incredible. So it's always wonderful to open those up and use them. And what I do is I will let these sit for three months. Now you could probably do it for less time, but I really want it to smell like orange and I really want it to smell like pine tree needles, in this case, Christmas or garland needles. And then what I do is I will uh, have a strain over my container that I'm collecting it in and then I'll pour it through and toss the needles, toss the orange peels and I'll have a wonderful, you can see that this is almost all gone. Um, this was from last year's batch. And you can see that it's very clear um, and it's wonderful. This was orange and you'll have enough to be quite frank. I do several quarts of this and it'll last me all year. So this is why I do it in January. You can see that I'm getting low and I need to refresh my supply. Super inexpensive. And again, if you're using oranges, it's not wasted. We usually throw those peelings away anyway. So it's a great way to use the entire orange. I hope you guys have enjoyed this recipe for an all-purpose cleaner. And it gives me a peace of mind when my little grandbabies come to me.
like me, you baked like a wild woman through the holidays, and you may have used up a bunch of vanilla. And this is something that I use this time of the year uh, to replenish my supply. And I did that actually in December because I used the last bit of it. But I'm gonna show you how simple this is and you'll never go out and buy vanilla again. Pure vanilla can be pretty pricey and this is a great alternative, especially if you're like me and you go through it quite a bit. Now I will say, this is a great gift and it would be a very sweet gift, no pun intended. And one of the things that you'll need, just two ingredients, but the first one is you'll need a carrier. Now I won't show you the label of this because, and if you drink this often, you already know what it is because you'll recognize it. This is vodka. One of the things that you're gonna need is you're gonna need your own vanilla beans. And these I bought probably a month ago and I didn't have the, I used them for something else. I was scraping out the vanilla beans to make homemade ice cream. So these are a little dry, but it'll be okay because when you put them into your glass bottle, which I would recommend that as well, because you don't want the plastic leaching into your wonderful homemade vanilla, these will rehydrate and they'll be perfect. You can find these just about anywhere on the internet and it'll be just as easy as this. You're simply going to add your vanilla beans. I use three to four good size beans in with my vodka. I'll let it sit up to six months and it's ready to use. Enjoy. show you how to make the cutest tissue container extravaganza ever and what's great about these is you can customize it I do this in January a lot um, I like to have uh, tissues accessible for all those runny noses and this is a super easy one now you don't have to use glass this is just what I had on hand but you could use anything you could use a plastic one you could paint it nobody would ever know you could also distress this very easily and all I'm gonna do is I'm going to take another tissue box, and there's nothing wrong with the, these. I had them all summer, there's nothing. But I think in winter, you know, you're kind of reorganizing coming out of Christmas, and I just wanna make it a little cute. So I'm gonna do this. Now there's absolutely nothing wrong with this one. In fact, this is super cute, but this will be really cute for the spring or the summer. But this just elevates your tissue box for sure. And these little rings come off very easily. You do not have to get one that is like a cylinder. Uh, you can use one from a big box, a small box. They are all kind of set up the same. And you're simply going to pull them out. Side. Now you can use a smaller jar, you can use a bigger jar. I'm gonna make it easy for today to show you uh, because they fit right in. How cute is that? Now you'll go a step further because you know now it just looks like tissue stuck in a jar and you're going to get these lids i'm going to show you before i put it in this actually came off of my hand uh, soap and so when i was going to go toss it i took the ring off to dump the dish detergent and this little thing came off and i'm like hmm these and you can get these off amazon you could probably make it for sure if you had a proper drill you just have to sand around so it's not sharp and then you're gonna thread your tissue through it. And how cute is that? It's so cute. Versus this, which one do you want? They're both great, but I just think these are cute as all get out. Now, you could paint these, you could distress them to let the ball, you know, jar emblem shine through or the measurements. You could use any jar as long as that ring will fit on it but I just think this is a great way to elevate your tissues. So cute, right? Let me know if you try it. Candles, and it can't get easier than this. 
come January, I make a big batch of candles and I enjoy them all year round. So that's another thing that I do in the month of January. And I don't know about you, but even if you live someplace warm, uh, Greenwood and I used to live in San Antonio, Texas when I worked at Kelly Air Force Base. There's something about a candle flickering away that just evokes a nice cozy feeling, especially in the winter. So I'm gonna show you how to make your own, super cheap. We're gonna get Dollar Tree candles and they come in these glass cylinders, which makes it perfect for melting and I'll show you how to do that super easy. A dollar twenty-five, and I probably I've had these a while, so maybe these were even a dollar. I buy them in bulk. You're gonna need a vessel for your candle, and I got this at the thrift store, and I just thought it was beautiful. I used it during Christmas, and it was filled with evergreens and berries, and it was just so beautiful. Here's another thing that I thrifted, and it's really actually quite beautiful. It's a bowl that's hand turned, and you can also use a wood bowl. That would be fine. I'm going to show you these copper mugs that I went bonkers for. These actually are thrifted. Aren't they cute? Cheers for a new year. Um, but I poured them at the very same time. And this one is absolutely perfect. And well, I have this up there, $2.39 per each. And I think it had a yellow, yep, yellow tag. So I probably got them half off. So this one's perfect. I poured them at the same exact time. This one, not so much, and it's fallen in the middle. It just whoop, went down the middle, just like that. I don't know if you guys can see. So I couldn't figure out, since I had poured them at the same time, why? Why'd one fall and the other didn't? It's kind of like a cake in the oven. When it falls, you're like, no. Um, so I, when I looked it up, what it said was it cooled too fast. So what had happened was the first one was the one that fell and the wax must have been at a higher temperature because I had a bunch of projects that was I, that I was doing. And then once I did this one, it was probably much cooler wax, to be honest. And so I was wanting to film this for you guys, and so I was wanting to expedite this to set up, to solidify, and so I set it in the windowsill and cracked the window, and it's very cold here right now, and that caused it to sink. So wax should be at 140, to 180 degrees and you can 100% like get a heat gun. I've ordered one since then so I can be a little bit more exact. The other thing that you're gonna need beside your vessel and your candle wax, you're gonna need some type of skewer. These are just actually cooking skewers that I run meat through and put on the grill. Why you'll need that is because we're gonna repurpose the wicks from these candles and you'll see, you probably have seen me make candles here on the channel. You're gonna lay that across and you can even tape, tape the skewer to the bowl and that way it's not moving and because it's very important that your wick stay where you put it. We'll also glue the end of the wick if we can. Uh, sometimes I have to put another connector to it but they're all going to be repurposed out of here so you're not going to use any uh, wicks that you have to buy. This one I dried fruit and I just put them in my dehydrator. It's some more of those oranges that we made uh, the palm anners with and then also the um, all-purpose cleaner. So these are still, you know, doing another job and I just put them in my dehydrator. You can also put these in your oven at a very low temp and just let them go until they're nice and dry. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how you can embellish the top of your candle. This is a glass bowl. I wanted to see if it would work at a high temp um, of candle wax and it was 100% fine this $1.25 and you can see where I put the skewers kind of crisscross and bent the wick around it. So it just keeps them in place, especially since this has three. So we're gonna go ahead and melt these. I'm going to add a little water to the saucepan. Oops, probably about like this up the jar. You never wanna let your pan run dry. It'll crack your jars and then it's gonna be a big mess. Um, and awesome too, it's super dangerous to have a dry pan just Know, going on the stove. I know you guys know that, but I've done it accidentally before. So just make sure that you watch the water level on that and add more if you have to and try to make that warm water that you're adding. You're not adding cold water into it. We're going to melt these down in my pan and then we're going to come back and I'm going to show you how to set your wick.
Now, after your wick is secure, just go ahead and pour your wax. I'm so sorry right as I was filming the part about pouring it in to show you about the orange my camera battery went and I, I apologize um, so what I did was you're gonna pour the candle to basically the height you want and leave a tiny bit of space and then you're gonna put a very thin layer of wax and you're gonna set that orange slice down into it so the top kind of shows through but it's in the candle wax and as the candle will burn it'll drop and drop and drop but it's so beautiful it's such a lovely presentation these would be wonderful gifts to give for valentine's day or as a birthday gift throughout the year i always have these on stash uh, for my family and friends it's a wonderful gift to take when you're going to dinner at someone's home or something like that who doesn't love a candle the nice thing about these is when you're done burning them you can clean them back out and use them for their original purpose or you can pour another candle and so it's just kind of like the gift that keeps on giving i hope you enjoyed this video i love it when you guys come by i hope your new year is filled with love and wonderful things be well best of health and i'll see you in the next video much love to you guys bye mm -hmm.